Hello and welcome. This video is in continuation to our previous video on measures of dispersion. In this video, we are going to cover interquartile range and outliers. Let's get started. Let's do a quick recap. So far, we've covered range, but we saw range considers only the extreme points. We talked about standard deviation, which considers each data point. Still, both range and standard deviation get influenced by outliers. We talked about outliers in our previous video on measures of central tendency when we concluded that whenever a data has outliers, using mean as a measure of central tendency is not that good an idea. Let's continue to build on our example that we considered in the previous video on measures of dispersion. Let's say we have this data. We can easily compute range and standard deviation using the formula. Now, if we were to exclude this outlier element of 2207, this is what we get. Now, if we compare, we see a huge difference in the values. So our range, which was reported as 2200, comes down to four. A standard deviation, which was computed as 694.96, comes down to 1.58. Therefore, we see that range and standard deviation both get influenced by the presence of outliers. Let's understand interquartile range. So let's say if we have this data, and if we were to divide it into four equal parts, such that each part contains 25%, we will draw quartiles. These quartiles are called Q1, Q2, and Q3. If you notice, Q2 is nothing but median, which is the 50th percentile. That is, it divides the data into two equal halves. Interquartile range by definition is Q3 minus Q1. Now what are Q3 and Q1? Q1 is the 25th percentile, Q3 is the 75th percentile, which means Q1 divides the data in such a way that there are 25% points below it and 75% points ahead of it or above it. Q3 divides the data in such a way that there are 75% points below it and 25% points above it. Therefore, Q3 minus Q1 or the IQR is the middle 50% which trims off the 25% on both sides. Therefore, it is not affected by the outliers like we see in case of range and standard deviation. Which is where the interquartile range is considered to be a better measure of spread when we have outliers present in our data. In one of our previous videos on central tendency, while we touched upon the concept of outliers, we use terms like too high or too low to describe the outliers. Well, these are subjective terms as they vary from person to person in terms of understanding. But since we need to put a clear demarcation to identify the outliers, we'll spend some time here to see the definition of outliers. The outliers are the data points which are below or less than Q1 minus 1.5 IQR or above or greater than Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. We saw that Q1 is the 25th percentile. So to identify the outliers, we need to subtract 1.5 times IQR, which is nothing but Q3 minus Q1. And if we were to identify the outliers on a higher side, we need to add 1.5 times IQR to Q3, which is nothing but the 75th percentile. So this is how we define the boundaries. If a data point falls beyond these limits, it is considered to be an outlier. Let's come back to our data, the same example that we considered, and we'll consider it with outlier this time. Using the percentile formula in Excel, and you can see the hint here, Q1 is equal to 8.25, Q2 is equal to 9.5, Q3 is equal to 10.75. And therefore, we can compute the interquartile range or IQR as Q3 minus Q1, which is equal to 2.5. Now let's see what are our outliers like and what the boundaries for outliers are like. Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. So 
8.25 minus 1.5 multiplied by, and you can do the calculation, you see it's 4.5. And the outlier on the higher side, likewise, Q3 plus 1.5 IQR, the boundary is computed as 14.5. Now, as you can see that anything beyond 14.5 on the higher side is going to be called an outlier. Whereas we are talking about a data point, which is 2,207, which is huge. Anything below 4.5, likewise, on the lower side would be considered an outlier. Fortunately, we do not have an outlier here on the lower side, but we do have an outlier on the higher side. Based on the calculations that we've seen, we can easily define the boundaries. And if we have an outlier present, we can accordingly decide on the right measure of central tendency as well as the right measure of dispersion. We'll talk more about outliers when we cover box plots. But this video concludes the measures of dispersion. If you like this video, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you.